let's check, make sure audio is working. Audio is working. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kelly Clement. We would like to welcome you to the Metastock YouTube room. Uh, we are very excited today to have Mr. John Bollinger with us uh, to help us uh, learn more, a little bit more about his Bollinger Bands and his techniques in trading Bollinger Bands. So we are very excited for that presentation. We are bound to start here in about nine minutes, uh, which is going to be awesome. Uh, now, as you come into the room, tell us who you are, where you're coming in from. Uh, my name is Kelly Clement. We are broadcasting here uh, from lovely Salt Lake City. Uh, tomorrow, I think it's not going to be so lovely. I think we're expecting some snow and rain the next few days, but we are very grateful for that because we are in a severe drought. Uh, but tell us where you are, where you're coming in from. So I'm uh, very happy to have you here. Again, uh, we're going to be get, getting started in about eight minutes with Mr. John Bollinger. Uh, if you are not familiar with Metastock, who we are, what we do, we are purveyors of technical analysis uh, and charting software. Uh, John Bollinger actually uh, developed his Bollinger Bands inside Metastock, so that's uh, one clue to how awesome Bollinger Bands are inside Metastock. Uh, but to introduce you to Metastock a little bit more, I am going to show you just a quick video. Uh, describes what Metastock is, what it's capable of, and then I'll be right back with you. And again, we'll get started with John in about eight minutes. Hi there. Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy-to-follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. Add on the world-class support and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat.
Okay, uh, there is a quick introduction to Metastock, who we are, what we do. Uh, we are very excited again to have Mr. John Bollinger here today to talk to us about his Bollinger Bands um, that he has, uh, he is the master of, obviously. So we are very excited for today's presentation. Uh, anytime we have John Bollinger in the room, it is always uh, very educational and very informative. So uh, be prepared to learn, be prepared with your questions and uh, we will go from there. Uh, now, as you're coming in, you know, this is John Bollinger. Make sure you like the video. Uh, as uh, Jeff Gibby just mentioned, uh, he just mentioned in the chat, uh, press that like button, which is always a very good thing to do because this will be an amazing video. So let me just go check with everybody, make sure that the presentation uh, on the other side is ready to go, and I'll check back with you in just a minute. Looks like we are uh, just about ready to go. I uh, just checked in with uh, Jeff Gibby, who is going to be our uh, host on the Metastock side, uh, introducing John and bringing him into the room. Um, John is ready to go here in about uh, one minute. So we're, again, very excited uh, to have both of them here to talk to us about Bollinger Bands and show us some of the power of Bollinger Bands as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, everything set up and ready to go. Uh, Hey, I like the uh, the Chia Pet. I like to have Bollinger Bands inside of my Bollinger Bands. That's how good they are. Bollinger Bands on top of Bollinger Bands. I like it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started here. Welcome again to this presentation with John Bollinger. We're very excited to have you here. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe as we get going and uh, let's learn some stuff. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, Jeff Gibby over at Metastock. 
I'm going to read the legal disclaimer for you, announce uh, our, our very nice guest today, and uh, turn over the time. So I want to say thank you, though, for coming. Uh, we have a great crowd. Hello, Angelo, Chia, uh, Greg, EG, Michael, Harmaco, and everybody else. Thank you for coming. Uh, I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're excited. We have a really good guest. So let's go ahead and get on with it. Uh, let's go ahead and read the legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading, and Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So uh, our guest today almost actually needs no introduction. Um, uh, probably one of the most famous technicians. Uh, one of the things I've had the pl pleasure of knowing John for a while, um, he's written a couple of really good books. I've got one right here called Bollinger on Bollinger Bands. One of the things that kind of strikes me is just how nice John is. Uh, we've, we've had the pleasure of kind of visiting with him and going to dinner with him several times over the last couple decades. And he is just such a nice guy, very well down to earth and very, very, uh, probably one of the most famous technicians we work with. So I love John. We're going to go ahead and welcome him on here today. Uh, John, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jeff. And you? I'm doing very well. Welcome to the welcome to the room. Let me go ahead and change the presenter over to you. We can see you and you um, we can hear you. So hi, Jeff. Um, you know, um, a, as you mentioned, we've worked together for decades. Um, so, um, um, you know, it's just a pleasure to be um, to be here again to talk about Bollinger Bands on Metastock um, and some of the powerful features that you guys have built into the Bollinger Band toolkit. Do you know? Uh, do you know how long it's been? Because I know, I know, twenty five years ago, I started here at Metastock. Yeah, so it's before, the, be, before that. <laughs> I actually started with Metastock for DOS. Uh -huh. Yeah. Before the Windows product. And I remember Steve Akalis, the, the founder of what uh, Metastock, he was really, really excited. He said, this will be the first TA program to fully take advantage of the Windows environment. So that, that tells you how long ago that was. It well, was also, through. you guys also yeah. had a fantastic product called the market technician which I, I i really loved um and that was actually my first true uh equus love product awesome well we're always we're so thrilled that you were able, you were uh willing to come join us welcome to the room uh, i can see your meta stock chart i can hear you uh, i'm gonna do what i am really good at and i'm gonna get out of your way all righty thanks so much <laughs> it's all you so hi everybody. Um, we're going to talk about Bollinger Bands on Metastock today. What we're going to focus on um, is the idea of trying to find optimal trading opportunities. Um, we're going to look at places where the odds of success are in your favor, at places where um, you only have to risk a small amount in relation to the potential reward, and places where we can keep our drawdowns to a minimum so um, with that, with that, I'm going to plunge into um, my PowerPoint. There'll be time at the end for questions and answers. If you have specific uh, uh, issues that you want to bring up, that I, I've saved time at the end of the presentation, um, and I'll be happy to take um, whatever questions you have. So. There we go. I um, hope you all can see my um, something. We can see it, John. We can see the uh, PowerPoint. Oh, my screen is flashing at me for some reason. Um, that's that's uh, that's interesting. It it looks good from here. <laughs> Oh, it worked this time. Yeah, okay, just, a, perfect. Uh, just a, a little bit of bad luck at the beginning. There we go. That, that'll ensure, ensure great success. 
So getting started, um, this is what we're talking about. Here's, here's your, your basic price chart. Um, this happens to be SPY, um, the big uh, S&P 500 ETF. It's the most actively traded security in the world. Um, and th on top of it, I have um, laid a set of Bollinger Bands. The blue line um, is the middle band. It's uh, simply a 20-day moving average. And the red line is the upper band. And the green line is the lower band. I thought I would start with a tiny little bit of history. When I came into the business, we had a great trading system that used fixed width percentage trading bands on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, and those needed to be adjusted all the time. Um, be in different market regimes and different uh, volatility regimes. Sometimes you have to set the bands a little wider. Sometimes you'd have to set the bands a, a little narrower in order to get the, the proper signals. We were comparing price action within the bands to the uh, action of a couple of indicators, one based on advances and declines and the other based on up and down volume. The problem was is that when you set the bands, if you're bullish you tended to paint a bullish picture and if you were bearish you tended to paint a bearish picture and you let your emotions into the process so i was an option trader and um at the time and i knew that volatility um was a very dynamic quantity and i thought that maybe we could use volatility to set the the bandwidth um and the result was bollinger bands so that's what we'll be talking about today um, and I, just um, one little definition to start with. Um, Bollinger Bands, and for, in fact, all trading bands, but Bollinger Bands in specific, define high and low on a relative basis. By definition, um, price is high at the upper band. By definition, price is low at the lower band. And we're going to come back and look at a lot of setups and, and such that use those definitions to help us find trading opportunities. So Metastock was one of the first platforms to adopt Bollinger Bands. Um, today, we're going to cover um, my preferred Bollinger Band chart setup. Um, and um, did I? today, we're going to cover my preferred chart setup, the most important Bollinger Band indicators, um, a screen for key trading patterns, um, the squeeze and the bulge. And um, we'll look at some of the Bollinger Band methods that I presented in my book, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, and how they're implemented on Metastock. So this, peer, th this uh, presentation uses daily charts. Um, it's because that's the way I learned how to trade, and I'm still most comfortable with daily charts. In fact, in my practice, I use primarily daily and weekly charts, although when I'm executing trades, I will shift down to very, very short-term charts um, to get the best execution that I can. Um, however, you can use these same techniques on any time frame, daily, weekly, hourly, minutes, 10 minutes, one minute, whatever. Um, all that is necessary is sufficient liquidity to see the price formation mechanism at work in each bar. Um, so um, for a, a super active stock like Google or um, Apple or SPY or something like that, there's virtually no limit as to how short you can make those bars. But for an inactive, um, say, over-the-counter stock that trades by appointment, you probably can't get um, any reasonable results below the daily time frame. So it, it entirely depends on what you're trade, trading. If you're trading the E-minis, for example, um you know you one minute or 30 second charts are, th there should be no practical limit to how short a time frame you can use um, but you're going to find me still using dailies and weeklies <clears throat> so our goal today um in our goal in in trading of this sort um is to locate opportunities where the odds of success are in our favor the amount risk is less than the potential gain and drawdowns are minimized. And we're gonna focus on all three of those ideas today as we go through the presentation. With that in mind, let's look at how trading bands in general and Bollinger Bands in specific can help us achieve those aims. 
So all trading bands serve the same purpose. They define high and low on a relative basis. By definition, price is high at the upper band and price is low at the lower band. When I do these talks in person, uh, that is to say live, and I'm sure that one day I'll get to do live talks again. Um, I always ask people to, to, to repeat after me um, the, 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 the basic definition of price being high at the upper band and, and price being low at the lower band. Um, because it's just so important. It's the core concept to using trading bands successfully. So building up to trading bands, let's use SPY as an example today. Um, and we're first going to present a chart with a measure of trend on it. That's the middle band. Um, we'll use a moving average to discover which way price is going on average. 21 periods is a good starting point. It was the starting point when I came into the business. We use 20 as default today. But the truth is that 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, this is a very robust approach and it's very insensitive to small changes in parameters. Um, so, you know, a, a, any any number of periods that you really want to use is more or less fine. I think the practical limits are um, 10 periods on the on the short end and, and 50 periods on the um, long end. Beyond that, I suggest that you change the time in the bars um, rather than um, adding more bars um, into the calculation so for example if you're if you're finding that you're you, you're wanting to use 10 period bollinger bands on daily charts why not take a look at 20 period bollinger bands on hourly bars or if you find out that you're interested in using 50 period bollinger bands on a daily chart why not look take a look at 20 period bollinger bands on a weekly chart um, we find that that range between 10 and 20 is the sweet spot for the Bollinger Band calculation. So if you stray too far away from there, um, you may not get the results that, that you expect. So here's our chart of SPY with a blue line through it. Um, you can see um, the line rises for um, most of the time that prices are rising and falls for most of the time that prices are falling. Um, that's... Um, you know the the definition of a trend measure and it's the base for our bollinger bands um it's really important to note that you know we're not using this line for crossovers so um although typically in an uptrend pullbacks will find support at, at the middle band uh, in a downtrend um rallies against the trend will find resistance at, at the middle band the middle band itself is not used for crossover signals it's just the base that we use to build the Bollinger Bands. So the moving average is selected to define the direction of the intermediate term trend for US stocks and similar items. Um, 20 periods is a really good starting point. Um, when the average is rising, the trend is up, and when the average is falling, the trend is down. Um, just really straightforward information. Um, now we create intervals above and below the average using a measure of volatility standard deviation and voila voila we have bollinger bands and we can let those limits define relatively high and relatively low so here you see the uh, a view of the bollinger band toolkit on metastock um, and we've highlighted the upper middle and lower bollinger band there and you just drag them out of that drop down drop down menu and drop them onto the chart and um, you get this result. I always color my bands this way, um, red at the upper, um, green at lower and blue in the middle. Remind me that 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 red is resistance and 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 green is is you know suggests buying opportunities and and such like that. Um, there's no ironclad rules there. It just has always made sense to me. Um, to use these sorts of colors. So here's the actual definition of Bollinger Bands. The middle band is a moving average of length. Um, again, 20 is the default. Um, the middle band um, plus um, width times volatility equals the upper band. Um, the middle band less width times volatility is the lower band. And um, where volatility is the population standard deviation of the same data 
that is used for the average. Uh, and the defaults for the multiplier are um, 2.0. So the, 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 the standard definition for Bollinger Bands is a 20 period moving average um, with um, an upper band plotted two standard deviations above the average and the lower band plotted two standard deviations below the average. So why do we use standard deviation as our volatility measure? And it, it's really important that it, it be standard deviation because it emphasizes the outliers. There's a sort of little magic inside the um, calculation of standard deviation. The deviations from the average are squared. And we know that if you square small numbers, you get another small number. But if you square large numbers, you get a really big number. So what happens when price starts to move away from the average, when it, a, a trend emerges, say, say an uptrend, and price starts to gap away from the average, the calculation emphasizes those gaps, those outliers, and expands the bands dramatically um, to keep our definition of high and low um, relative to the price structure. Um, that means um, Bollinger Bands calculation very sensitive to breakouts and adaptive to changes in the volatility regime. All of that just means that it keeps our definition of relatively high and low germane to the price structure. So Bollinger Bands define whether price is higher or low on a relative basis. Now you're all gonna repeat after me loudly Right, I, I, I've turned your cameras on and I've turned your your microphones on so I can see and hear you. So don't cheat, All right? So prices are high at the upper Bollinger Band. Prices are low at the lower Bollinger Band. I saw a couple of you cheated and didn't repeat after me, but you get the point. So in order to go any further, in order to, to, to achieve our aims, I need to introduce a couple of Bollinger Band indicators. Um, the first one is going to be percent B. And um, percent B tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands. Um, I'm sorry. I just uh, um, I, I just asked um, somebody to get me a clock so I can see where I am in the presentation. Make sure that I have enough time for your questions and answers at the end. Um, so percent B tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands. It's equal to one at the upper band and equal to zero at the lower band. Uh, here's the the formula for percent B. It's the last minus the lower band divided by the upper band. Uh, minus the lower band. Those of you who have studied a little bit about technical analysis will recognize that's a, a variation on the formula for stochastics. Uh, and um, all we've done is um, take the actual formula for stochastics and sub out the upper band in place of the periodic high and sub in the lower band in place of the periodic low. Um, so uh, there, there are a number of other ways to do this. Um, one could have done this with Z scores or, or other uh, statistical ideas, but uh, you know this is a technical analysis tool, so I wanted it to behave like other technical analysis tools. Um, so I've kept the scaling so that 1.0 uh, occurs when uh, price is at the upper band, and zero occurs when price is at the lower band. Um, this will be a negative number when prices are beneath the lower band and a number greater than one when prices are above the upper band. So adding um, indicators here, pretty straightforward. Um, just drop down that menu, um, look for BBTK, and we're gonna, gonna screen, we're gonna scan for percent B. We're just gonna drag that and drop it on, onto the chart. And this is what we're gonna get. Note that I've co colored um, the reference levels on um, percent B to match the reference levels on uh, the Bollinger Bands. I, I always keep this coloring coloring the same. I think it makes it um, a little bit more helpful um, to, um, a little bit more visually helpful. So one of the things we're gonna talk about today is this W bottom here that we made in the S&P before we took off on this rally. And you see that we made a, a low 
outside of the lower Bollinger Band and then rallied and made another low inside the lower band, which is actually a new absolute low in price, but it's not a new absolute low in terms of percent B. Here you see on the first low, percent B is beneath um, zero, and on the second low, percent B does not break the lower band. That's the definition of a W bottom in Bollinger Bands. Um, so we wait for a confirmation day. That occurred, um, that occurred right here when we had a solid up bar, and um, then we have um, an entry into a long uh, signal that uh, initially tags the upper band and then walks up the upper band. Uh, this is typical behavior. So let's stop for a moment and talk about that, walk up the upper band. A lot of people believe that um, a tag of the upper band is a sell signal or, or a tag of the lower band is a buy signal. Well, that can be, but it's not always the case. You need some sort of confirmation, and typically we turn to indicators like volume indicators, intraday intensity, accumulation distribution, on balance volume, even RSI and and the money flow index um, uh, are 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 useful in that regard. Um, so what we're doing um, is comparing uh, our price action within the bands to the, to the action of indicators. In this case, we're just comparing it to percent B. Um, and you can see that um, when we make this trade here, oops, when we make this trade here, we have to risk a new low because if we make a new low here, then um, uh, we know we're wrong and we exit the trade and walk away. Um, so when we make this, we risk this amount here um, and with a potential gain of a walk up the upper band. So here we have a setup where we've risked a relatively small amount and in pursuit of a larger potential gain. And that's the name of the game with trading with, tra with, trading with Bollinger Bands. In fact, it's the name of the game when trading with any sort of trading bands. We want to find these opportunities where we risk a relatively small amount in pursuit of a larger gain. There's obviously nothing guaranteed about that, but we want the odds to be in our favor. Uh, the other thing that we do is we wait for this confirmation day here. Um, and by waiting for this confirmation day, by waiting for this confirmation day, we increase the odds of our success. So we're looking at, at, at a small ratio between um, uh, what we have to risk um, versus what we're going after and um, uh, the, the good odds of probability of success. So the second indicator I need to introduce you to today um, is bandwidth. Um, bandwidth tells us how wide the Bollinger Bands are. Um, best when compared across time. Um, that is, peaks in bandwidth and troughs in bandwidth need to be compared to prior peaks and prior troughs in, in bandwidth for that particular security. And that's because each security that you trade has unique volatility characteristics and trades in a unique volatility regime. So what's high for one security is not high for another. Um, and the only way um, to figure out um, the, where you are in the volatility regime is by looking back in history. So the formula for bandwidth is very straightforward. It's just the upper band minus the lower band, and it's divided by the middle band. Um, so it's, a, it's actually a percentage number. Um, and again, once again, you just um, reach in here into the Bollinger Band Toolkit and grab the one that says bandwidth and drag it and drop it onto the chart and you get a chart like this. Now the upper black line that you see there and the lower black line that you see there are our way of helping you um, find out um, whether, pro whether bandwidth is high or low. Um, those reference lines compare the historical range of bandwidth over the past 125 periods. So by definition, when you when bandwidth tags the upper band, we are what in what we call a bulge or a period of high bandwidth. And by definition, when um, bandwidth tags the lower black line, we are in a squeeze. Um, and 
that's um, an opportunity uh, for trading in anticipation of an expansion of volatility. So this is the basic Bollinger Band chart setup that I always use. Um, just a, a, a simple chart of price. Um, usually use candlesticks. I think it really helps um, emphasize the um, difference between the open and close in addition to um, whether, how price is changing over time. Um, we find that in uptrends, um, price tends to close higher than the open, and in downtrends, price tends to close lower than the open, and I think candlesticks highlight that relationship and, and add some value. Um, beneath that is our first clip down there is uh, percent B, um, and then underneath that is bandwidth. So this is the, the core Bollinger Band chart setup. So let's talk about um, some Bollinger Band chart patterns. Um, we talk about the squeeze, um, which is a trough in bandwidth and a forecast for increased volatility, and a bulge, which is a peak in bandwidth and a forecast for decreased volatility. So another way of saying that, and I think this is a very important concept that you really want to pay attention to, is uh, a squeeze, which is a trough in bandwidth, is the beginning of something. Um, and a bulge, which is the peak in bandwidth, is the end of something. I like to say it this way. Um, a squeeze is where trends are born, and a bulge is where trends go to die. So um, the neat thing about um, the way Bollinger Band Toolkit is set up on Metastock is that we can squeeze, we can screen for setups that we want to pay attention to. So in this case, um, I have um, opened up the Explore function on the Power Console, um, and I have uh, checked off the Bollinger Band Toolkit Squeeze function. And um, in this case, I've chosen the S&P 900, both the S&P 400, which is the mid cap index and the S&P 500, which is the large cap index. So the, this is the 900 um, largest cap stocks in, in, the, um, in the universe. Those are the, on the bottom left-hand window there. Those are actually lists of, of um, the, con the uh, contents of those indices. So we'll be, be screening across 900 stocks. So um, here is an example of the squeeze um, from ABBV um, recently. Uh, you see uh, a little red arrow on bandwidth there um, pointing to where it touches the lower, um, the lower limit. Um, that sets up a squeeze and we get a breakout from that squeeze. And then um, after um, some consolidation, you get another squeeze um, that's the right hand arrow th this one over here and you get um, a breakout here what i really like about this pattern is often when you have a squeeze they'll try to break it to one side in this case down and then reverse it strongly and um and go in the other direction we call that a head fake uh, and that is in fact my favorite squeeze trade I really like it when they um, try to take it one direction, fail um, in the context of squeeze, and then reverse and go in the other direction. It's another one of those setups where the odds are in your favor and you only have a, a relatively small risk, amount that you have to risk, um, versus a much larger potential gain. So um, here's a, a, another uh, great setup. Um, this is the um, internet security firm, um, Fortinet. Um, and you see a squeeze on the left-hand side that leads to a prolonged walk up the upper band. So these sorts of walks up the upper band are, are why we very specifically do not sell every tag of the upper band. We look for setups where the odds of success are in our favor, um, not um, paying attention to every tag of the upper band. And then over on the um, right side of the chart, you see another squeeze occur, um, and this one generates a breakdown. Now, note 
both of these, um, they tried um, to take them in the wrong direction before the real move occurred. Um, and you know th that's a very, very common behavior when you're in a volatility squeeze. Um, so uh, you know, be very careful about going with the initial direction of a move. Uh, in fact, what I like to do is I like to ignore the ones um, that just go um, in the straight direction and focus on the ones that do a head fake. So here's that same chart, but now we're going to talk about a bulge because the bulge is an end of a move. So here we see bandwidth rise up and tag the upper band and then turn down. That often happens at the end of trends. So this um, is a signal either to take profits, um, take some money off the table, um, or tighten your stops um, or in, in employ some other uh, sort of exit discipline. You've had a very nice run from a squeeze setup and a nice long walk up the upper band. So when you get a downturn in bandwidth like this, um, especially when it is accompanied by a declining pattern in percent B, then we want to start fielding defense um, rather than offense. So here's a couple more bulges. Um, um, show you how, how bulges mark the end of trends. Um, this is ABMD, um, and we had uh, on the left, uh, in the left pattern, a very strong decline, and you can see bandwidth turning down, marking the end of that decline. And then recently, um, ABMD had another big decline, um, and bandwidth is walking up the upper band. Um, and I believe just turned down um, yesterday, marking the end of the decline in ABMD. Um, a couple more bulge examples. Um, this one in CMI, um, marking the end of an advance over here, marking the end of a decline over here, and marking the end of another decline um, over here. So bandwidth very useful both for finding opportunities and warning you about um, potential places where the trend in play can possibly end. Now I sh you should be careful here because often when you get a bulge um, you'll just enter a period of consolidation um, not a decline. So a bulge is not a reversal indicator so much as it, it's an indicator that that portion of the trend um, has come to an end. A very, very common pattern, especially for strong stocks, is you get a rally, a bulge, um, then you'll go through through a cons consolidation, which we call a relative strength pivot, and then you'll start back up again. Um, often after price ha has um, generated a squeeze. So um, a bulge is not a reversal indicator, but it usually is a very good indication that that phase of that trend is at an end. So in my um, in my book, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, I, I presented three methods. Um, um, we're going to look um, at, at the third of those methods um, today because the past year has been a really, really choppy market. Um, and um, it's been a, a great market for swing traders. And method three is a, the, the sort of method that a swing trader might use. It's a, you, you look at price within the bands and you look at it, a volume indicator to confirm strength and weakness. And when you get a lack of confirmation, um, you have an action opportunity. So our goal here is to clarify tops and bottoms. So um, I, I, again, we go to the Power Console and um, select Explore. This time we're going to check off BBTK2 um, method three. And again, we're going to pick the um, stocks in the S&P 900 and screen for them. So um, the next thing we want to do on the chart, um, we, we, have, we have provided for you a number of chart templates 
and um, the toolkit has uh, templates with indicators and alerts for each method. Uh, so on the chart, you can right click and choose apply template and then choose the method three template. Um, but it, that works for any method um, that you are using. So this is what um, those templates um, uh, look like. I've highlighted um, some of the signals that, that were provided by this method. And you can see method three is a classic method um, for swing traders and reversals. Um, it, it picks bottoms. Um, you see those bottoms in the green circles there. If you look inside those green circles, you'll see that there are green arrows indicating where the method three signals occurred. Um, and um, likewise, there are red arrows um, where the method three cells um, have occurred. So th this is really, um, again, a nice swing trading technique. It is, in fact, the technique that I first used with Bollinger Bands. It wasn't used exactly this way, but my very first application of Bollinger Bands was this sort of reversal system where we go up and tag the upper band where a volume indicator was negative, wait for confirmation, and that would be a sell signal. Likewise, we fall, tag the lower band. If a volume indicator was positive, then we wait for confirmation, and that would be our buy signal. So it was a swing trading method. Um, and um, often, um, because back in the days when I started this, um, commissions, uh, were very high and trading expenses were very high so we do this on weekly charts and um, you know try to get swings that would last um, weeks and months um, to ameliorate the um, entry and exit fees that we had then of course today you have paradise uh, commissions are zero and spreads are super tight um, so trading costs have, have dropped dramatically so you can take advantage of, of setups like this, even on very, very short-term charts, and still be profitable. So the um, other thing um, you can do is you can add an expert commentary, which will talk um, about the various um, places on, <clears throat> on the chart. Here you see the method three um, reversal applied to AbbVie. Um, and um, you can see um, what um, is going on with that. The nice thing about the, the expert system um, is it gives reference to um, chandelier stops, um, which, give, which help um, manage your drawdowns and, um, take, and profit taking opportunities. So here's a, a method three on GIS. Um, you can see, again, we've highlighted the, the buy and sell signals um, that um, are generated here. Um, the, the sell signals have been have played out very nicely. Um, I like especially um, this pair of this uh, sell signal here with, with a nice decline. Um, and then right into a reversal buy signal in, into a nice rally. Um, often um, you'll find, um, as in the left hand bubble and this bubble over here, the second bubble from the right, um, these sell signals at the end of a rally will lead um, to a consolidation period. Um, that's um, very similar to the sort of analysis we did with. Um, we did with bandwidth. Uh, so that's why we wait for uh, price confirmation. So um, here's uh, um, another example of method three. Um, at, on the left-hand side, you see a, a group of buy signals um, at the bottom, um, and then you get a nice little rally to the upper band where you get a group of sell signals, and the same sort of set, set up on the right hand side of the chart. I especially like the last um, uh, signal, um, which proved very prescient toward the powerful two-day rally that we've seen um, recently. So th these charts are just a couple days old. And here we have um, method three for sedge. Um, again, you see the how the opportunities stack up. 
if you examine these charts carefully, you see that waiting for confirmation improves your odds of success dramatically. Um, so often you'll get an initial signal and price will move lower and you'll get a, a, a second signal, uh, or I, I actually call these alerts, not signals. Um, and then you get a third you get a third alert, and then you get an up bar, um, uh, which which confirms uh, the reversal. So we'll always wait for that price confirmation in order to pr improve the odds of our success. So this is one of the most important slides in the entire um, in the entire presentation alerts versus signals wait for confirmation alerts are simply opinion they're the opinion of the software they the opinion of the trader they're the opinion of the investor signals are facts that have been that have been created from opinions where the market has confirmed the opinion and i, I can't i can't emphasize this this enough um, we need to wait for the market to confirm our opinion. One of the things that we often find in this, in this sort of analysis is that broken setups contain a tremendous amount of information. So if, uh, if you get a few buy alerts and price continues to fall, uh, that tells you that there's really a strong downtrend in place. Likewise, if you get a few sell alerts and price continues to rise, that tells you that there's a really strong uptrend in place. That's why we wait for confirmation. So I know you're all going to stand up now and, and repeat after me, wait for confirmation. But I'll, I'll let you off. I won't make you do, do that. So we've covered a lot of ground here. The point is that we have some really powerful tools at our disposal. And with a little innovation and discipline, we can use them to accomplish great things. So. Um, if you um, I, over the years, I, I've gotten a lot of questions about Bollinger Bands, and I put together a, a FAC, uh, frequently answered questions about the 22 um, most common questions I've gotten about Bollinger Bands. We call them the 22 Bollinger Band rules. So if you send an email um, with rules in the subject line to rules at bollingerbands.com, we'll send you back a, um, a little document that has these 22 Bollinger Band trading rules, and I think you'll find them very useful to answer uh, literally almost all of the commonly asked questions about Bollinger Bands. And finally, uh, a little give back from, from my firm and myself. Um, each week we create a market timing chart pack um, and it's available for free on my website, BollingerBands.com. If you page down to the bottom of the, uh, of the main page, you'll see uh, um, the, the following little little, little area uh, with a, a link to download the um, the chart pack. It contains 40 um, general market timing charts of, of the sort that we use in our uh, in our market analysis. Um, it also contains a link um, to the um, doc file, um, the description file, because the the charts are unannotated. So. Um, there's a long doc file that you can read that explains what each of the charts are. In addition, you can sign up for email notice. Um, I usually create the chart pack over the weekend, usually on a Saturday. But if you sign up for an email notice, we'll send you a notice every time the chart pack is, um, is posted. So here's the little contact information for us. Um, our main page is www.bollingerbands.com. Our analytics site is bollingerbands.us. My email is bbands at bollingerbands.com if you have any questions. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of active on Twitter from time to time. Um, and my Twitter handle is at bbands. Um, so you can reach out and touch me there as well. Um, thanks for spending time with me today. Um, it's with awful lot of material to cover in a relatively short time, but I think it gives you a good overview of the potentiality of the Bollinger Band Toolkit on Metastock um, and the sorts of things that you can do. Combining these screening functions with the uh, method templates and the experts, um, I think will help you find setups where 
you know, the odds of success are in your favor and the amount you have to risk is relatively small in comparison to the potential gain. And finally, um, you know, where drawdowns are minimized, uh, which is always a, a big thing um, within the trading world. So with that, I'm gonna switch my screen over to Metastock itself and turn it back to Jeff Gibby for some questions from the audience. Okay, and we've got a lot. And I know we probably won't be able to get to all of them, but we're gonna do our best, <laughs> right, John? Okay, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay, okay. Uh, Chia Pet wants to know what your uh, favorite volume indicator is. My secret volume indicator? There are no favorite. secrets. Um, uh, um, the volume indicators that I like the best are intraday intensity, which was written by David Bastian, um, accumulation distribution, which was written by Larry Williams. And I'm very fond of MFI, the money flow index. All of those volume indicators are available in the public domain. Um, they're available in the Bollinger Band Toolkit, um, and there's nothing secret about any of them. The secret sauce, if you will, is combining price action in and around Bollinger Bands um, with those indicators to find opportunities. But, um, um, you know, I think that's pretty fully disclosed in, in, in the material we presented today. Perfect. Carl has a really good question uh, in GoToWebinar. He said, "We learned what we need that we need to wait for confirmation. What is your favorite method of a confirmation?" So, uh, just talk about a W bottom for a second. You come down, you make a low outside the lower band. You come back and and you make a low inside the lower band. Um, best when when it's abs a new absolute price low and there's a lot of panic in in the market. Um, so. I just look for a sign of strength, um, a day of relatively strong price action. Um, I look for uh, greater than average true range, excuse me. I look for greater than average true range. Um, and in, in general, I just look for, you know, price action in the direction um, that would confirm the setup. Uh, there's nothing magic about it. Um, often, if that price action breaks a um, a, a, a support level, uh, I mean a resistance level, like look, look at this. We came down here and we, we made a low outside the lower band. And so there's a possible little W um, here. Uh, and you can see the, the difference in, in percent B. So, um, this next day um, comes and you say, well, it's not really a strong day. Maybe that's not confirmation. But the the next day here, um, clearly, it's a big day. We open at the low. We close at the high. It's got good range. Um, and it takes out the prior one, two, three, four-day high. So that's a clearly confirmation. Um, so you can write confirmation rules if you like, but I think if you just look at the chart, um, confirmation should be a pretty clear concept. It's um, There's nothing magical about it. You just want price to be going in the direction that you hope for. So if you enter on this day, um, you know, your risk is a close outside the lower band. So, you know, there's your risk. And you've, the first potential is the tag of the upper band, right? And then we do this little walk up of up the upper band. So. Awesome. Thank you, John. Um, we did. Uh, we, I know that earlier in your presentation, you said you like to look, look at dailies and weeklies. Uh, Cap Hill wanted to ask you what time frames you'd recommend, particularly when it comes to futures trading. Um, well, you know, this is really a personal matter. For me, it's still dailies and weeklies. Um, uh, that's just how I grew up. Um, and it's the area I have the most experience in it and the area in which I am the most comfortable. Um, um, you know, futures traders tend to be shorter term traders. So maybe um, 
dailies and hourlies um, on average would be more common in the futures community. But it's again, it's an entirely personal matter. Some futures traders are hyper short term, right? Just you know, in in for a couple of minutes. So they'll be working on 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 minute charts and and maybe the long term chart will be a half hour chart or something like that. Um, I'm afraid there's no there's no good general answer to that question. It's a it's a personal question. Yeah, how much time do you have? Right, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a huge part of that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Exactly. For for me, I I don't like sitting sitting you know, watching the screen, watching a trade continuously. I I I got some other things I want to do, things I want to read and 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 work out. I I want to do so. Um, hyper short term trading is not for me. Uh, okay, Mike says hi, John. I've been using Bollinger Band since your days on FNN. Yay! Um, I've never. I've never used toolkit to keep charts clutter free. It seems like the toolkit indicators with base Bollinger bands are implied. Am I wrong? That's how, uh, and I hopefully that question didn't make a lot of sense to me, but um, well, but maybe well, let's, just, let's just talk about the contents of the toolkit. Um, so the nice thing about the toolkit is, um, you know, it's got a lot of parts and pieces. Um, you can, you know, you get an idea um, here. Um, you can see Metastock has a lot of parts and pieces to boot, but you know, there's just a, a, a ton of items in the toolkit, and that's only you on the screen right now are only about half of the items um, in it. Um, so there are, are Bollinger Bands themselves, um, plus uh, a series of Bollinger Band indicators, um, some volume indicators. We also have exponential Bollinger Bands. A lot of people um, feel that you know they they want Bollinger Bands that are a little bit more front weighted, uh, that that focus on the most recent price action. So you you see exponential Bollinger Bands here, the upper, middle, and lower. Uh, right here. So those are more front weighted, uh, and and a lot of people li like those as well. Um, so the toolkit basically provides a wide variety of of, of trading tools um, that uh, you know I, I think work beautifully in the Metastock environment. Um, Okay. Cool. I guess a part, yeah, of, actually... a part of that question was is is probably should you use the same parameters for um, the 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 say Bollinger Bands percent B and bandwidth, and for that um, my answer is absolutely yes. Um, all of these um, all of these items um, have um, parameters that you can you can set, um, and I would be consistent in my parameter setting. Um, okay, perfect. And, uh, Emmett has a, a or a meet is probably the proper way to say that. Sorry, a meet. Uh, but he says um, you, there are four different templates, uh, and you had talked about how uh, three might be a good recommendation to trade in the volatility that we've been having lately. Um, his question was, uh, do you have advice uh, on when to use the other ones? Well. Um... You know, you know, this year has been a giant sideways year, so the swing traders have had a party. But um, people who have, um, you know, uh, trend traded, um, people who are more trend traders, I, I should say, have had tons of opportunities in individual stocks. The market has um, uh, been very, very um, diverse in that way. Um, some stocks have been mired in downtrends. Some stocks have been mired in uptrends, and many have been marching sideways. So uh, it sort of depends on what you're going to trade. Um, you know, one of the methods is a squeeze breakout method, um, and some people are only interested in, th in that sort of thing. They don't want to worry about any anything else. Um, the method four is a particularly interesting method. Um, because in a trending market, 
it's a trend indicator and in a non-trending market it is a reversal indicator so it, it it's the why we so the bottom line here is why do we call this the toolkit because this is in fact a toolkit and you can assemble um almost any trading approach um that suits either your personal style or the characteristics of the thing that you're trading perfect you're this is you're doing great john people uh we're getting a lot of really good feedback just says this is great um michael wants to know uh Actually, I just lost the question. Oh, Sky had a really good question. After a cons cons consolidation period, I can't talk, it's too early. Uh, what do you look for to determine which direction the price is going to break at? So this is the hardest thing. This is, this is the hardest piece of Bollinger Band. So the from a price, you know, let's say we're, was this person's name Sky? yes mm -hmm. it was yeah 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 so sky's been a fantastic stock this year i must say um it's uh it's 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 one of our core holdings so um you you, you you've got a um you've got a stock named after you that's doing really well <laughs> um so um let's assume that you have a strong stock like sky um and you know, you, you you enter a consolidation period and 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 you, and you get a squeeze. Um, so we know that with really strong stocks like that, they tend to continue. So the odds are that you're going to have a positive resolution. So what I would look for ideally is you know the the consolidation, a squeeze, a little pullback in the squeeze, and then a turn higher call that the head fake we talked about that before that that's just the most delightful pattern for me um in terms of tie breakers um uh volume indicators uh and there are a whole bunch of volume indicators um both in metastock itself um and in the toolkit um i find those very helpful because they get an eye on the they, they they get an eye on the supply demand relationship for that stock. Is it being accumulated during that consolidation? And that brings us to the other sort of uh, thing that volume indicators do is they give you an idea whether the stock's under accumulation or distribution. So I'm very fond of volume indicators uh, for stocks, not so much for futures um, or forex, but um, in in the stock trading world, I think the volume indicators can be very useful. Awesome. Yet can um, yet can want. Uh, uh, I know that's pronounced properly, but he wants to know what do you think about using um, three or four for bandwidth instead of two? Do you think this is a good opportunity, or do you have any thoughts? So the neat thing about having created Bollinger Bands is to see all the different ways people use it. So some people plot one, two, and three with Bollinger Bands, um, and you know they feel that that gives them a, a greater sense of how price is behaving within within its limits. Um, some people plot very wide Bollinger Bands um, of, of the sort that he's talking about and, and, and look for reversals at, at the upper and lower band. Some people plot very narrow Bollinger Bands and use them as a trend following indicator. Um, so you break out of the upper band and then uh, walk up the space above this very tight Bollinger Band. There's just a, a, a lot of different ways um, to, to, to do this. Um, let's see, I can, no, I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't spend my time trying to uh, trying to get complicated here. Let's just move on to the next question. Okay. Carl says, uh, "Thank you very much." Uh, Scott Brown says, "John, you're a legend. Thank you for all your great insight." Scott um, Brown, the Scott yeah, Brown, yeah. the Scott Brown. Oh. He's watching on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> for those who we don't know, Scott Brown sort of, um, you know somebody of presence at metastock <laughs> yeah. uh, he's somewhat of a presence you might say everywhere yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in any case uh, james wants to know have you ever explored balancing a b band over a price channel or something similar like keltner channels uh read me the question again because i, I think yeah. i have a great answer 
Have you ever explored balancing a Bollinger Band over a price channel or something similar like Keltner Bands? So a very popular technique a long time ago, is, I haven't heard that much about it recently, um, but a very popular technique is to plot Bollinger Bands and Keltner um, on the same chart and use um, the, when the Bollinger Bands pull inside the Keltner Bands, use that as a squeeze indication. Um, so that, that'd be a setup for an expansion in volatility. Um, that, that That's, you know, I mean, th there's probably about a million billion words written about that on on the internet. We did have a question earlier about the chart, uh, if there is charts available on your website for study. And I actually just went and grabbed the uh, chart pack. I'm going to take a look at it. But go to www.bollingerbands.com and just download the chart pack. Uh, uh, I'm very interested to review it after we're done today. Yeah, so there are 40 charts in there. They're the charts that we use to analyze the market every every week. Actually, we calculated a couple times a week, but I only parted on, I usually only posted on Saturdays uh, because there's a long tradition um, amongst technicians of, you know, the, the close on Friday being really important and combining dailies and weeklies. For example, in the, in, in the old days, um, we used to, um, go to the printing plant here in Los Angeles where the they, um, daily chart books were printed on Saturday morning. You could go there and get them fresh off the press. <laughs> and, you know, a whole bunch of technicians and people, you know, traders would show up and it was a great event. Everybody would bring coffee and stuff and you get to chat with people for a few hours and get your fresh, fresh chart books. So there's a tradition of this, um, um, daily and weekly analysis, and somewhere in my to-do list is a weekly version of that chart pack. Um, so, um, yeah, it's cool. just a little bit of a um, a little bit of give back from me to um, the markets and the investors and traders in the community that have been so good to me over the years. Benjamin says, it's very nice to meet the progenitor of Bullinger himself. Thank you very much for this. Oh, my pleasure. Then, uh, in case you didn't realize, I'm not, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, James says, thank you. Uh, Nitin says, thank you. Um, Anil says, thanks. I saved the very most important question for last. Are you ready for it, John? I think so. Tube says, um, uh, John, I know you're also a beer aficionado. What is your absolute favorite beer for Friday after a good trading week? <laughs> well, I, I like IPAs. Um, um, and I, I think, um, you know, your first love is always your truest love. Um, and the, the first of the modern series of IPAs, which is long ago, that I tasted was from Sierra Nevada. Um, so I think one of Sierra Nevada's uh, offerings um, would fit that, probably um, Torpedo. I'd give it a go. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, let's really, see. it's really good. <laughs> All right, one more question. Uh, somebody said, uh, I really like your book. It's one of the best book uh, that I've read. What's the latest revision? There is no latest revision. That book is um, um, the the book is the book. Um, actually, I've, I about every you know so often I go back and reread it, and it has weathered remarkably well. Um, I am at work on a sort of study guide and addendum to um, to it, but it's um, no promised time schedule on that. <laughs> it's right. mostly done um it's mostly done but uh um um uh, you know maybe early next year i don't know maybe jim says thank you for doing this uh great information i've also been watching you since fnn 
Uh, Anna wow. says it was really a great, great pleasure having you uh, live today in today's webinars. My greetings and best wishes from Chennai, India. And uh, Nilesh says, thanks for the presentation. Thank you for bringing, or they say, they're thanking us for bringing you, but I want to thank you for coming. We'll have you on oh. anytime. Oh, my pleasure. You know, it's always a pleasure to work with you guys. Um, you know, you're the salt of the earth. So um, take care. Thanks for spending time with me today and good trading. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about your toolkit um, as well. Uh, but I do want to say thank you for spending some time with us. That was great. Great job. I uh, really appreciate everything you've done for Metastock over the years. My pleasure entirely. Awesome. Okay, so let me kind of go ahead and kind of take back the screen controls here. John does such a great job, and we do. We really appreciate him coming in, um, uh, sharing time with us. He always does su such a good job. Let me go ahead and turn the presentation over to me again, and I'm just going to go for maybe like five or ten minutes. We'll see kind of how it goes uh, to just kind of talk to you about everything that's included in the Bollinger Band on Bollinger or the Bollinger Band Toolkit. Um, one of the things that I will, let's go ahead and kind of go back right over here real quick. And let me go ahead and start the presentation. One of the things that is uh, based on, or the John Bollinger Band Toolkit is based on, is the book Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, which I have a copy right here. Uh, but in it, he talks a lot about the formulas. And one of the things that he kind of, John kind of alluded to, it's a very, very extensive book. Uh, or, add-on. Uh, in it, um, it's got about 50, well, you can see right here, it says it's got 47 indicators, 10 market explorations, nine system tests, and four different methods that are actually included as expert advisors. So here's a list of all of the indicators. John showed you how those work. I would recommend that you pair this with your own copy of Bollinger on Bollinger Bands because John does a really good job of kind of detailing how all of these indicators work, how they're calculated. It's a very, very well-defined book because I'm not the first person to say in the chats even today, uh, but all of these indicators are included. In addition, one of the things that uh, John talked about a lot is the, the scan or the, I'm sorry, the bulge and the squeeze patterns. And in Metastock, there's about, um, well, there's nine explorations as part of this package with John. So, uh, but with Metastock, that allows me to go in and, for example, if I wanted to find a squeeze pattern, let me just kind of go into Metastock real quick here. If I wanted to find any of the stocks that have a squeeze pattern today, I can open up my power console. Here's all of the scans that are available in the Bollinger Band Toolkit 2.0. But if I wanted to go in and find a squeeze today, a stock that was in a squeeze formation and breaking out, I can just click select this exploration. And I know we've had a lot of people from India, London, um, there's a guy from Singapore earlier. Uh, but one of the things I love about the scanner in Metastock is with the data that we get from Refinitiv, we actually have about 296,000 instruments that you can analyze, look at, and use straight from the Metastock platform. So I'm going to show you how to run an exploration real quick on the S&P 500 constituents. But you're, if you're in Australia, you can scan your Australian stocks. You can do European stocks. There's about 200 different exchanges that are available in Metastock that you can scan. So that's been a, a huge advantage to us because we can, we have customers that we very much appreciate in India or in London and in Australia. And uh, uh, you can use this on whatever markets that you're interested in. Um, there's over two or 300, diff there's over 200 exchanges that you can actually follow. Uh, I also like the way that it's organized. So for example, right here, we've got all the equities in Asia, all the equities in Europe. And so if I'm a North American trader, which I am, if I, and I wanted to scan the North America, I can actually click right here if I wanted to grab, just scan everything that's optionable in the market, maybe you're an options trader, I can just select that button right here. It's not a lot of clicks to get to what you're doing. Uh, very well organized. I think they did a great job when they organized these lists. For me, though, I'm just going to run a quick scan of the S&P 500 to see if there's any bulge formations. So I've actually got a number of explorations selected because I was running quite a few of these earlier. Let me just select the squeeze. Uh, I'm going to come down here and I've got the index constituents selected. Here's the Dow Industrial and here is the S&P 500. I'm going to go ahead and start that exploration. It's going to go ahead and run. And now what it's going to do is it's going to basically kind of give me a list 
it's already looked at about 60 of the stocks. Right now it's rejecting about 98% of them. But what this allows me to do is to only focus on the stocks that in this case are breaking that squeeze formation. It's, it's a tool I use in Metastock every single day that I trade. And that's almost every day. Sometimes I'll get busy at work and I'll forget that I want to run a scan today, but I trade almost every day and scanning makes it so effective for me to just ignore all the noise and focus on the stocks that have an opportunity to exist in the market. And here, as you can see, instead of looking at those 530 or so stocks, we'd be looking at four or five. So those are the, basically, that's how scanning works in Metastock. Here are all the scans that are available as part of it, uh, as part of the Bollinger Band toolkit. Okay, so there's, there's quite a bit of them. Uh, in addition to that, we do have system tests. The system tests allow you to test trading ideas and see how they work. And then we also have a, a number of methods that, that John put together for this toolkit that combine indicators to kind of give you uh, good and solid entry signals. So uh, as you can see, there's method one is uh, a volatility breakout system that uses Bollinger Bands. Method two is a trend following system. Uh, John uh, per personally said he liked the method three, which is a reversal system, and he likes method four. Now, I call this, uh, on this screenshot, you see us call it methodologies. It means that they have matching explorations. You just saw them on the exploration list. It also means they have matching system tests but they also have what's called expert advisors. So right now I just kind of randomly happen to have uh, Lexington Realty up on a chart. Yeah, this, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply uh, method three. So what, all I had to do here is right click on the chart, go to apply template, uh, and we'll go to BT, BTK, and we'll just look for the uh, uh, method three. What that's gonna do is it's gonna apply all of the indicators that go into method three we'll be able to see all of the buy and sell signals that are fed into that. We go ahead and zoom into the kind of like an area of the chart here. So you can kind of take a look uh, and you'll notice that it's going to kind of give you uh, buy and sell signals based on that. Okay. You also notice that he's giving you the indicators that are re required or that are recommended that you use with this method. And one of the th other things that we've designed is what uh, is another feature that I love in Metastock that's called uh, the expert commentary. So with it, let me go ahead and just show you that real quick and then we can kind of wrap up. Uh, if I go to view expert commentary right here, it's going to open up a screen and I'm going to just basically, that commentary is going to be at the far left side of the screen. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this bar right here for this method three reversal. And uh, what you'll see here is um, right now we're, we're below the bands, which is exactly what's happening. Uh, our current stop, so if we're in a trade, these would be our suggested stop trades. If we're in a long position, uh, this, uh, we could use a Bollinger stop, which would be at 773, or we could use a, a chandelier stop, which would be at 615. Now those will update every day. So if I go forward one day, I'm gonna have a new stop value. Okay, you can see right now, uh, a couple of days later, it moves that stop up to 784 or 720. Just telling you what they are, telling you what you should be using for a stop and giving you a couple of options based on John's work. Okay, uh, in the case of you're getting a buy signal, it's gonna give you some advice. Uh, right here, this is the day that we're analyzing again. It's saying Lexicon Realty is currently issuing a method three buy signal. The buy signal is generated because this happens and this happens and this happens. So I love the commentary because it kind of helps you. The exploration helps you find the trade. The commentary can help you, especially as you're new to kind of the Bollinger Band methodologies to understand what's going into the actual methods and how to read them, and what your stops are, what you can be doing with them. And John did a really good job with these commentaries as you'd probably expect. So it includes the four different methodologies. All of those are attachable to a chart. All of them will give you automated buy signals. Hold on a sec. <coughs> I think that's it for that one. Um, and uh, that commentary, uh, annotate the charts, highlight, color code the bars, um, very, very good methodologies. Again, in total, there's four different methods, which are four different explorations or experts. There's 10 explorations, uh, nine system tests, and 47 custom indicators. It's a, it's a really, really big package. We were, uh, I was talking to our sales guys, and I, I really think this even at the retail price is undervalued. It's underpriced. It's an incredible deal. Uh, what normally for the Bollinger Band Toolkit 2.0, for all of those indicators, everything that's included, is normally $50 per month. Um, 
we're even going to do a little bit better than that today. We're going to give you a webinar special where if you subscribe to um, the Bollinger Band Toolkit for one month, you'll get the second and the third month for free. Now, I do want to say that this does require Metastock. If, if you're just here because John was here, I want to say welcome to the channel. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Say hi to us in the comments. That helps a lot as well. But if you haven't heard about Metastock, Metastock's been rated number one in its price category for the last 27 years in a row by the readers of Stocks and Commodities. And uh, you do need the Metastock program to run this. Uh, I would encourage you to try it. There's a reason it's been rated number one 27 years in a row. I particularly use and love the scanner. You, you That by itself can pay for a Metastock for you. But what I would, what we're gonna do with that, if you need Metastock for the first time, if you subscribe to Metastock for one month, we'll also give you the second and the third month for free. Okay, so if you already have Metastock, great. Uh, you can just pay $49. You'll be running um, the Bollinger Band Toolkit 2.0 into March. Funny that that's March is only three months away, right? 2022. Uh, uh, if you need to get Metastock, there's uh, versions of Metastock that start at 69 bucks that can get you all the data, the platform, everything you need to get started. And we'll even have, have somebody help you install it. You'll have unlimited access to our technical support team that's located here in Salt Lake City. Uh, and I'd encourage you to try it. It's a great time for you to try it too, because we're going into the holidays uh, after that, which you'll probably have some downtime where you can actually look at meta some charts and do some system testing and really get comfortable with things. But uh, seasonally also, January, February, March are usually great months to trade. And uh, uh, give it a go. Um, if you don't like it, you can cancel your subscription. But there is a reason uh, that John is so uh, does such a great job. He knows what he's talking about. And there's also a reason Metastock's been rated number 128 years in a row. So give us a call, 800-882-3040. Uh, you can visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat. You can also sign up online at metastock.com slash John Bollinger A. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. John did a great job. We really appreciate John coming in. Um, he's such He's such a great technician. Uh, we absolutely love him. Um, for those of you uh, that asked about the recordings earlier, uh, the recordings will be available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash metastock. If you're attending uh, this in GoToWebinar, we will send you the uh, link directly to this video within about an hour of the end. If you're watching the video recorded on YouTube or if you're watching it live, I would ask you to like and subscribe to the channel. We do all kinds of really good sessions. Sometimes uh, at the end of November, we did a week-long session about uh, about uh, <laughs> with different experts. So subscribe to the channel so you can come, like the video. It does help a lot. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much, John, for your time. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, we'll see you at the next webinar.